today and talk all about myths. All right, there we go, we're recording. Um, so like it was said, I'm Amanda. I am an educator for Singer, and today we're going to talk all about myths. This is going to be the basics. Um, so if you're brand new to knits, they make you nervous and you just want to kind of understand how to sew them, you're in the right place. Um, we are not using any kind of serger or anything like that, just our sewing machine today. So it's going to be really great. You're going to feel really confident after this class on how to sew knits. So I'm going to jump over to my other camera so that we can start talking about them. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat. It makes it more fun for me and I love answering all your questions. So put them in the chat. Sani will help me answer them or she'll feed them to me and I'll answer them directly. All right, so give me one moment. Okay, so for those of you that are brand new to knits, um, you probably at least know that when we talk about knits, we're talking about a stretchy fabric. So I have a few here to show you. Um, and what makes knits so great for uh, garment sewing is that they are stretchy. So fitting is less of an issue than if you were to use a woven fabric. Um, they drape differently. There's a lot of fun things you can have with a knit and they are actually very easy to sew. So before I kind of talk about some of my samples here, I want to talk about how a knit is actually made. So I have this, if you haven't printed this out or if you haven't downloaded this, this is available for the class. And this is going to kind of go over everything that I talked today, but I have some really neat illustrations and diagrams in here for you uh, to kind of help you with sewing knits. So the first thing I want to show you is how a knit is made. And you can see there's these two different options here. And this is actually how the threads or the fibers sit in the fabric. So when we talk about woven fabrics, fibers are going directly across and they're going directly up. And that means when you pull on them, you're pulling on a single fiber. So there's nowhere for them to really go. And that's why it's called woven. It's kind of like a basket weave here. Now a knit is interlocking loops of thread. And that means when it's pulled, those threads have some give to move and that's how we get stretch. So they're kind of woven together differently. And the easiest way to show you right here, I have a sweater knit and you can actually some see, I'm hoping, see some of that interlocking there. So some knits, you won't be able to see it because it's so tight, but some of them, you can actually see that weaving in there or that interlocking of all the fibers. So that they're really great to use. Um, another great thing about knits is usually, not always, but usually the ends don't fray because of that interlocking. So you don't necessarily, when you're starting out, need to um, do any finishing to your seams. You can just put your garment together and wash it and wear it, and it's really gonna hold up well. Now, some are, they will fray. This is a much chunkier sweater knit and this has a rib in it as well. I just wanted to show you some options and you can see here, this one will come undone. So it just depends how tightly knit the knit is. I have some other options here and I just wanted to show you just some options of fabrics and see how versatile knit is. This is a rib knit. A lot of times this will be used for a collar or a cuff, you can actually put this in strips and it makes a really nice cuff. I have here, this is called a waffle knit and this is super stretchy and usually you'll find this in sleepwear. And all of these come in different thicknesses, different stretch factors, all kinds of stuff like that. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Here is extremely tightly woven. You can see, you can't even see those interlocking stitches. And this is a ponte knit. So this one has really good, it bounces right back into shape. And this is really great for structured garments. You can make jackets, you can make pants. Um, if you think about like a dress pant that is stretchy like a yoga pant, this knit is fantastic for that. Another option I have here that you might know the best is this is like a spandex. So this would be for a swimsuit. You can see lots of stretch and they come in really fun colors and prints. 
I also have here a jersey knit, which is really thin, and this would be great for t-shirts. Again, this can come in a solid or a print. It's super drapey, which makes it really lovely for summer dresses or t-shirts or tanks. And then lastly, this is just a very basic um, knit lining. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because this one doesn't bounce back as well as the other ones. It has a little bit of bounce back, but that's actually called a lot of times when you're talking about stretch fabrics, the retention of the fabric and how they bounce back. So this one doesn't do that as well. So I wanted to show you that, unlike one of these, that it goes right back into shape. So you have to keep those in mind when you're making garments of what you're using and how it's going to hang on the body and what kind of stretch you want. Do you want it to be so stretchy that it really drapes well? Do you want it to be more like this, where it's structured, it holds its shape, and you can work with that structure? So there's a lot of options and fun stuff you can do with knits. Now, the reason I have all these cut here is because a lot of times when you um, are working with a pattern, the pattern is going to tell you what type of knit to use. So like I said before, you can't make something drapey and loose with this structured knit. You would make something drapey and loose with this sweater knit. You can see how they kind of move a little bit. So pattern designers are gonna tell you what knit they suggest and they might list it by name. Like they might suggest a jersey knit, a rib, a sweater fleece, things like that. But they might also tell you something like it needs to be a low stretch or a high stretch. So you can actually figure that out at home. And in the, um, in the packet I gave you, I actually made you this little handy stretch ruler. You can buy stretch rulers, but this will, this, you can just print this out, came with your PDF. And this is actually a way for you to figure out what the stretch of your fabric is. So what you need to do to use this is, this is, you need a four inch piece of fabric and you hold it on the end and you pull. And you can see here, if I hold this and pull here, you can kind of see how far it pulls. So this ponty knit goes right into around that medium stretch. So I know that this is a medium stretch um, knit. If I wanna do like this waffle knit, I could hold this in place, stretch it. That doesn't go as far in that direction. It goes way farther in that direction. And that's something you also need to be aware of with knits is two-way versus, excuse me, versus four-way. So some knits like a sweat or a swimsuit knit will equally stretch on all sides. So when you read about it, if you're shopping for fabrics online, it'll say a four-way stretch, or it will say a two-way stretch, which this one is a two-way stretch, goes that way, does not go that way. So that's also something you need to keep in mind when choosing your knits for a pattern. So you need to make sure that it is the right stretch level if you wanna get the fit that the pattern designer has designed for their pattern. You also need to make sure it has the right stretch. You don't wanna make, say, a bodysuit out of something that only stretches one way because it's gonna to be too short on your body and you won't have that give. It was designed for something more stretchy. So I hope seeing these makes a little sense there. And I don't know if there's any questions or confusions. I, and if you want to tell me what your level is with knits, if you're brand new, or if you've played with some, please put them in the chat. I love to see kind of where you're all coming from. Um, but I think knit 101 is to know kind of how to understand a piece of fabric. If you buy something in the store, you wanna be able to see how stretchy it is, see if it stretches two ways. That'll really help you decide what it can be used for. Amanda, the nice you, thing, yeah. I was just gonna say, I this is really great information. Everybody mm -hmm. is like, thanks, they're, they're new, there are lots of newbies, you know, that sort of thing. But one of the other comments that was made was, you know, knits can be made out of different types of fibers too, right? Absolutely. So you might want to just address that just a moment. Yep, absolutely. So they can be made out of cotton. They could be made out of, so natural fibers 
or polyester synthetic fibers. It can be a blend. Um, so a lot of times, like a waffle knit, a lot of times, I think I said this, if I didn't, these are used for pajamas and more of your like loungewear. Waffle usually has some natural fiber content into it blended with some spandex or something to give that stretch. I actually have a shirt here that I completely made on my sewing machine with a, this is a cotton jersey fabric here. Um, so yeah, you could have totally, I really love using a cotton jersey knit. I find those the most comfortable, the most breathable, especially if you're making stuff for the summer. I'm actually wearing a French terry that has some um, cotton content in it. So yeah, they can absolutely be made of all kinds of things, nylon, uh, spandex, polyester, cotton. So yeah, thank you for that, Sonny. That's really helpful to talk about what they're made. A lot of times a pattern designer might not say it needs to be cotton, it needs to be this, but sometimes it will. So you definitely want to look at that. And then with your handy ruler, you can kind of take it a step further and check. Maybe you have some fabric that you bought previously and you want to use it for a project, but you don't remember what kind it is. You can make sure it's the right stretch at least. Um, and you can just kind of feel it and see how it feels. So another nice thing about knits, I just want to talk about the positives of using them. I talked about how you don't need to necessarily finish the edges unless they unravel. You also maybe don't need a zipper for your gar garment. So a lot of times we know with t-shirts, they just stretch on over us. So we don't need a zipper, which especially when you're a beginner sewing, zippers can be stressful. Um, so knits actually eliminate that need for any kind of closure. All right. So now... I want to, because I know we want to start sewing and seeing how to actually sew them together. The last thing I wanted to talk about before I move to my machine is needles. So the two needles I'm going to show you today that are necessary, well, I would say at least one is necessary for sewing with knits, is you want to get a stretch or ballpoint needle. We have these linked on the class. This is actually a set that has universal and ballpoint in it you can get also just the ballpoint. And the reason you want that, and I have, again, this little diagram here, if you can see that, it's actually talking about the shape of the needle. So your universal needle is very pointy on the bottom, and that is gonna go straight through the fibers. A ballpoint is rounded, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna slip through those, those knits. So it's gonna actually go between the fibers, and it's not gonna damage the interlocking fibers. And that's really important. Um, it's also gonna help with slip stitches and things like that. So you definitely, if you wanna get just one thing <laughs> to sew with knits, you wanna get the right needle. And just like any other needle, they come in different sizes, depending on what weight of fabric you are working on. If it's a tighter, heavier knit like this, you're gonna move up a size. If you're doing a very fine jersey, you're gonna move down in size on your needles. So I actually already have one of these in my machine and I'm going to move over to the machine and we'll start sewing some samples. And there, yes, there is one more, I saw in the comments, there's one more needle I'm going to talk about, but we're not there yet. So some machine setup before you get started. Um, I'm using the heavy duty 6700C. This machine has already plenty of actual built-in knit stitches in it, which I'm gonna show you. Um, but when threading your machine for knits, the first thing you wanna know is you want to use polyester thread. So doesn't matter what color, any as long as it's polyester and you wanna put the same thread in your bobbin. Uh, you don't wanna use any quilting thread or cotton thread like that or top stitching. You want to use this polyester. And the reason is you can't tell, but if you've ever held, this does give ever so slightly. So that's why we want to use that polyester with our spandex and our knits and our jerseys. So I have my, my ballpoint needle in here. I have my machine threaded 
exactly the way you would. Let me just get this in better shape. There we go. And today I'm going to just sew on some white jersey. Um, but I'm using red thread just so you can kind of see my stitches and see what I'm doing. So the and first thing I'm going to do, yeah, was there? A I was just, it was actually, Amanda, mm -hmm. I, you know, people um, just, is there a way that you can um, like know if there's a good quality knit? I mean, is, do you have a, I, I like, I feel it, right? And I can yeah. kind of tell, but how do you know a good quality? So for me, definitely feel um, you touch things. And for me, I love a knit that, like I talked about that retention. I love when it bounces back. Sometimes you'll find a knit that doesn't bounce back and that fabric is stretchy, but maybe it's not the best quality. Um, I also, again, talking about fiber content, I love like a cotton blend Jersey knit. I just find that very versatile. It's drapey, it's pretty, but it holds its shape and it holds up to washing. So yeah, like Sani said, just touch it, feel it. You know, this is a brushed knit here. It feels really nice. It feels good against my skin and it stretches well and it bounces back, which is what I always look for. Because um, that'll just keep your clothes looking the way you want them to look time and time again as you wash them and wear them. So the first thing I want to show you is what not to do. And that is to show, a sh excuse me, sew a straight stitch. And the reason I wanna show you this is just to show you why you don't wanna sew a straight stitch. So I'm just sewing that with a 5 8 seam allowance. And you can see here, it looks fine. It looks like a stitch. It looks great on this side. However, when this starts getting worn, just a light pull and my threads break in places. And we definitely don't want that in our knit t-shirt. So that's something that I think beginners do a lot. They just start sending this through the machine on a straight stitch. And I'd say, don't do that. So I'm gonna show you what stitches you actually can do. I'm gonna show you a few. So, and like I said, there's plenty more. If you have the PDF, I actually gave you a diagram of my favorite stitches on this machine. Your machine may have these, they may not, but the most universal one that I'd say pretty much every machine will have is a zigzag stitch. So let me see if I can just move my camera over here. I wanna show you kind of my settings here. So for a zigzag, you could start with just however it's set. So on this machine, it's number five here that I just clicked. And this is the base setting for a zigzag. You can play around with the width and the length. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. So, give me one second. Sorry, I didn't mean to shake my screen here. All right. So for a zigzag, and I'm still using, I'm just assuming this pattern has a 5 8 seam allowance, so I'm lining my fabric up there and I'm doing a zigzag. And something you may want to do because every knit is different is you're going to use a test piece of fabric. That's really important when sewing knits. You can just have scraps of your project to test stitches and I'll show you why. So what I'm doing here looks fine. It's stretchy, but that takes up a lot of you know, my seam allowance, it's gonna be bulky. So I'm actually going to turn down the width and you can go pretty low. Right now I'm gonna set it at a two and I'm actually going to raise my length. A lot of times when you sew knits, your length wants to be a little bit longer. I'm gonna line these up here because we would be doing that. And you can see here, this one is going to take up a lot more of my garment or take up a lot less of my garment there. And it still stretches. You could even go down a little bit further. to get something like that, which is pretty close. You can see that pretty close to a straight stitch. Now, the more of a zigzag you have, the more your fabric is going to stretch. 
So this is the simplest way to sew your knits is just a zigzag stitch. You can see here when I open this up, my seam looks pretty good. Again, you're seeing these stitches because I sewed in red. If you were doing it in a matching thread, you wouldn't see that. So that's a zigzag stitch, super easy to do. And I'd say almost every machine has that. So now let's get into- Amanda, before yep. you go on, I just mm -hmm. put in the chat, you know, use a zigzag stitch with a smaller width of like two or one and a half. And what was your stitch length that you changed to? Yep. So right now my machine is set to a 1.5 and my length is at a three. Okay. All right. So I, so. I just wanted to confirm I was saying the right things. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. So that's where I am now. And again, you're going to play with, depending on your fabric, you might change the zigzag. So you want to send it through, sample it, and look at it and see what you like best and what's working for your project and your knit. So those are two options right there. All right. So now I want to move on to uh, two stitches on this machine specifically that I love and the next one I'm gonna do, it's number six on the machine. And this is a multi-step zigzag. So you'll see this one's really great and I'll show you what applications this can be used for. So this one actually goes back and forth. A lot of little stitches as you sew. And this one, again, you can change the width a little bit as needed. And this one is super stretchy and secure. So that one is a fantastic stitch. And you can see how here it's a little tighter. Here it's a little looser, but they still do the same thing. Now this one, when you do a thicker one, is not as good for a seam. What this is awesome for is sewing things like um, elastic bands on bras or swimwear. This is really going to secure your elastic and this one stretches really well. So this multi-step zigzag is, you know, if you make it a smaller width is great for a seam. If you leave it as is or make it a little bit of a bigger length, it's really great for, again, elastic additions, swimwear, because it's going to stretch with everything because of all those tiny stitches. So I hope you like that one. I really like that one for lots of applications. The next one I'm gonna show you is number four on this machine. And this is actually called a stretch stitch. So specifically made for stretch fabrics. So this one actually is like a little lightning bolt. It goes up and back, up and back. And that gives you an extremely stretchy seam. So this one is really great. You did see it does take longer and you can see it can get a little bit wavy because it's very dense. So you can play around with the length a little bit and the width, but I believe it doesn't let you go too far because then you're gonna lose the ability to stretch. So I'll show you, this one looks awesome on the inside in a seam there. Again, it's a little dense. So what I would do is maybe play with my tension. And that's something with knits that um, you'll be doing a lot. Well, not a lot, um, <laughs> but if you find your fabric is waving like this, you can actually loosen your presser foot tension as you go and see if that helps a little bit. And Amanda, what was the name of this stitch again? This is the stretch stitch. Um, it can be used on tricot or stretch fabrics and it's number four on this machine.
All right, so you can see here this, I just adjusted my tension. I went down just a little bit. Um, so there's not as much pressure on my fabric as I sewed, and that seemed to do a little bit better. So that is the stretch stitch. Um, I'm going to pause for a minute and talk about wavy fabrics in general, because we have that a lot in our, um, when we sew knits on a sewing machine in general. So you can play around with the tension. You can also use a walking foot, which this machine actually comes with one, which is fantastic. Um, or most machines you can get it for, but this one comes with it. So it's super great. And this is great for quilting, but it's also great for sewing knits because it's going to help your fabric go through. Um, so highly recommend if you're having some, you know, if your knit is really loose and really stretchy, it's one of those high knits, it might bubble a little bit. And you can try those two options of playing with your tension or using a walking foot. So Amanda, one more mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah. Can you show the picture of that stitch on your machine? Yeah. Because we have some people with different uh, machines. So if you can just kind of show, oh, and it's in your, there yeah. we go. I printed it. So you can see here, it's that That's little what it's going to look like. All right. Yep. Yep. So that one I really like. Um, it's really great for sewing knits and seams. So we've gone through three options so far. We have our plain zigzag. We have our multi-step zigzag. We have our stretch stitch. And that's in what you just showed. That is within the, um, the information that they can download, correct? Absolutely. It doesn't have, I don't think it has the numbers on it, but you can look up your manual and just see which one, or I can tell you the stretch step is number four. The zigzag is number five and the multi-step is number six yeah, on this and that's machine. on that machine. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And all three of them are actually on the front of the machine. So they are always accessible and really easy to use. Um, and again, I think someone in the chat put, they were asking about the names. And if you download the PDF, even if you don't have this machine, all of those names You'll have to look through the manual of your machine to see how they correlate. But on this machine, it is right there, four, five, and six, right on the front of your machine. So they're always there at a press of a button, literally. Um, next one I wanna show you, if you wanna get into kind of a mock serger look or a overlock or an over edge kind of look on your machine, there is actually a stitch called a slant over edge stitch. And what that's going to do is give you kind of a finished edge on your knit garment. Um, and someone, I think someone asked if this is going to be accessible when recorded. And the answer is yes, this will be posted usually tomorrow or the next day. But yes, this information is recorded and you'll be able to watch this again. So the slant stitch, let me again here, I'm going to switch to my overhead camera to quickly move this camera so you don't get all dizzy, but I want to show you how you get to these stitches here on this, um, on this machine. Okay. So it's a little dark, but you can kind of see that there. So you have your handful of stitches right here on this machine. And like I said, this is your stretch stitch, your zigzag, your multi-step right there to access the other stitches on the machine. You're going to hit this button and you see that change to a two. So we're now in folder number two and the stitch I want to show you is number three. So we'll give it a second and there it goes. It's changed. So that's all ready to go. All right. And let me move my camera back again. Okay. So this one is really fun and it's easy on your machine. So what this is doing is this is actually going back and forth and then a stitch over. And you'll see in a minute what that looks like. And I'm actually sewing, um, if I if I considered this a 5 8 seam allowance, say my pattern said that, I'm actually, I moved my fabric over slightly because this stitch does come out a little bit. Um, so we want our stitches here to be on the 5 eighths seam allowance there. 
And that's whenever you're doing these stitches that are wider, like the zigzag or this over edge, you wanna take an account where your stitches are gonna end for that seam allowance. And this is another one where if you wanted to um, make it a little bit longer. So I just raised, it was at 2.5. I just raised my length to three, just to show you what that looks like. All right. So this is an over edge the slant over edge, and you can see how stretchy this one is. That really stretches, which is awesome. And when I open this up, I've got really nice, secure, beautiful seams there in my knit fabric. And what you can do to finish this is you can actually cut off your seam allowance. So oh, let me get in the camera there so you can see what I'm doing. See here? So now I can actually cut off my seam allowance and then that won't be in my garment. It's all secured, it's in there. I got pretty close to here. And then I have a really nice secure seam for my knits that really stretches well and does what I needed to do. And there's also, you know, if you get into wovens or you're working on wovens, there's stitches like this for woven fabric. This is just specifically for knit fabric and it's called the slant over edge stitch. So those were the stitches. I would suggest any of these are great for a seam. Um, so it's kind of, you should start playing around and see what you like, what works, depending on how thick or thin or stretchy your fabric is. One might work better than the other. This is, you have four options here to sew your knits really easily on your sewing machine. Amanda, um, real, real quick. Mm -hmm. Do you have, of all of those, do you have a favorite? I was just going to say, uh, my favorite is actually the plain zigzag. And the only reason why is because if I need to take it out to fix something, it's the easiest one to remove. <laughs> so, you know, we all make mistakes or you want to make adjustments. So I would say for that reason... I love the plain zigzag because I can take this out and re -sew. However, for like secureness, um, I like this over edge one. And then for, again, for any kind of lingerie, swimwear, this multi-stitch, like it's so secure and it stays in your fabric and it, it just makes a really nice stitch. So I, I like all of them, but my go-to generally is just a plain zigzag um, just because then I can make adjustments. Um, or if I'm sure, I'll do one of the other ones. So those are my favorite stitches on the machine. Now I want to talk about, oh, quick, I want to talk about, I skipped over this, but just some best practices when sewing your knits. So again, the first one we talked about was using polyester thread. We talked about using a proper stretch or ballpoint needle. Another thing I want to talk about is when you're sending your fabric through, I'm going to do here just like this. Oh, let me get this out of the way. Hold on. I got too eager and I need to get my threads in a better place here. Okay. So when we're sewing this, when you're sewing knits, you don't want to pull on your knit as you go. You want to just guide it with your hands. So you can see here where I pulled it. My stitches got funky and it's rippling there. So you want to, whenever doing knits, you want to make sure you just guide it through and you're not pulling on anything. That's important. We talked about the walking foot. Um, if you're going to wear your knits, which most of us, when we're sewing knits, that's the reason we're making a knit garment is because we want to wear it. You want to make sure you wash your fabric beforehand, especially if it's got some natural fibers in it, because it will shrink and you want to get some of that out there. Um, Somebody asked about special consideration when sewing delicate knits to keep them from snagging. And I would say, make sure you're using a new needle. Um, you should be changing out your needle often, but if you're using something really delicate, make sure it's a brand new ballpoint 
fine needle, like you want to go like a 12, you don't want to go heavier and that's going to help you through. Um, you'll also adjust again, you can adjust your thread tension if you need to. Although I find when sewing knits, I don't usually mess around with my thread tension, but I do play around with the presser foot just a little bit. And on this machine, this is your presser foot dial. So you turn it and as you go, that's going to make it tighter. That's going to make your presser foot sit a little lighter. So, and on this machine, generally you keep it at a two. Um, I have mine at like a one and a half for these knits. So the, and oh, somebody asked about backstitching. I tend to, so if you're going to backstitch on knits, which you absolutely can, um, you want to here, let me do it this way. Make sure that you're not backstitching right on your edge there. So you can see my fabric is on my edge. And if I try sewing this, it's going to push my knit inside my machine. So what I like to do is start a little bit past where my fabric is um, and then go backwards. Now, some of these stitches will not let you go backwards, but that's okay because again, on these like this, overlock one, it's got so many little stitches that, you know, at your top is going to be okay. So it may not let you backstitch, but if I were to do, oh, let me change back to a zigzag. I could zigzag. I could go back and I would just wouldn't get, I don't want to go too close to my edge. So that's the only difference with sewing backstitching with knits is you want to make sure uh, you don't get that sucked in, have your needle push it into the machine. And that's, that's a really sloppy backstitch, but I was just trying to show you um, how you go about that. All right. So another thing, if, unless there's any questions, I want to show you a way to hem your knits because I think you're going to be really excited about how to do this professional finish. Yeah, that is actually one of your questions, actually. It so is. I knew, I knew you were going to get there. So, Amazing. Um, yeah, but there is one um, other question is like, if you're taking in, she's, Melissa's asking about if you're taking in a t-shirt on the sides, should you sew up from the hem or down from the top or does it really matter? So I generally sew top down. So you should like on a skirt, I would be sewing from the waist to the hem, same with a shirt from the underarm to the hem, um, because that's the way it's going to hang on your body. So generally, no matter what I'm sewing knits or wovens, I try to work from top down. I hope that answers that question. And somebody said, so a backstitch is not necessary. I'd say if you can do it, do it depends on your stitch. Um, but no, in these knits, just you don't necessarily need to backstitch, especially if you're using like these multi-step stitches that have a ton of little stitches in them holding your fabric in place. Okay, so hem now, because I think you're really going to like this. When I learned about twin needles, it was a total game changer. So this is a twin needle. And what this actually is, is it's got the one shank to go into your machine and two needles coming down. And you're going to see why that's helpful in a moment. And this is going to just go into your sewing machine. It comes in different um, widths. So this is four millimeters. You can get them closer together, further apart. Well, I don't know if they go much further apart than this, but um, lots of options for kind of the finish that you want. So I'm going to install this in my machine. Make sure whatever foot you have on your machine is wide enough to handle these needles. Now, here is the hugest thing you have to remember when using twin needles. You need to set it on a straight, a straight stitch. So if you've been sewing with any of those other stitches, multi-step, the slant over edge, make sure you change to a straight stitch before you hem your garment. Cause if not, you're going to break one of these needles when you send it down and it happens. You just don't realize that you've had your machine set that way. So always check that you're set in the right place. Okay. 
So to use this, my bobbin is staying the same. My top thread, so let me again, I'm gonna switch this over so I can show you the threading here. Give me one second. Okay, so you can see my machine here. I have my thread that I've been using and I'm gonna put a second thread in here. So somewhere on your machine, right on this machine, it's right here. You can see there is the post that stands up. And so I have my two threads here and we're gonna thread them the same. So I'm actually, I unthreaded both just cause I like to be able to do them at once. And I'm coming through my machine here. Oh, hold on, my thread is all tangled here. Give me one moment. All right, so I'm threading my machine as I normally would with my two threads. When I get to here, I like to clip my ends, have nice fresh um, threads here. And what I like to do, I don't know if this is necessary. However, I feel like this is what I always do. Whatever thread is in this spool, because it's to the left, I like it to go in the left needle. Um, that may not be necessary, but I find that that is helpful to me and helps it from not getting tangled up. Amanda, so, can you just yep. move your camera down oh. just a little bit? I someone see else I'm was doing. thinking I'm I'm watching closely too, and Carla was like, "Can we <laughs> please see a little bit more?" Yep. So you saw me. I threaded it through here like I normally do, and now I'm threading my needles. And I think you can see that a little bit better here. So then this one is gonna go in here. So I'm just threading my two needles. Everything stays the same until this point. So you're following the same path of your thread until you get in this little holder here and then we're splitting and we're going to each needle here. So now, and I did thread these one in orange and one in red so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna get my threads to the back and, and now, before you get started, I'm sorry, I'm being very talkative yeah. today. Amanda. No, I love Excuse it. I love me. it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the question I have is, can you use your needle threader with a twin needle? No, not on <laughs> this machine. So see, when I bring this down, my needle threader is coming right between those needles. So that's not going to be a help to me. However, if you have like a separate one or the one that goes, you can hold it in place and get it through there. You can set those in. But if it's connected to your machine, it's going to go right between and that's no help to you. So I'm sorry, you will have to thread your needles, which I know is no fun. Um, but you'll see this is going to be worth it. Okay, so if I want to hem this, I have a piece of knit here that I folded up my hem. And I fold this up. So I'm just hand folding it so I can show you. Um, it's sitting at like seven eighths of an inch here, you're going to want to press this in place just to get kind of that crease and hold it in while you're while you're sewing. Um, and you may want to put some pins in here to hold this, but I just kind of want to show you what you do to hem. So I folded my hem up. This would be the wrong side of my fabric. Hems folded up and I'm actually going to turn this to the right side of my garment. So this is my right side. My hem is folded under and I'm going to set this under the machine and you can see I'm starting a little ahead because again, I don't want my needles pushing my fabric in. I have it set to a straight stitch, so I'm good to go. And I think I said this before in the beginning, I'm going to turn my length up a little bit. So when we do knits, we want to stay a little higher. I'm going to set this at a four to start and see how that goes. All right. And then I'm going to just sew. And what I'm looking for is I want my needles to kind of hit this edge here. So I told you that I had mine folded over at seven eighths or around there. So again, you would measure if it's five eighths, you want to have it folded up and a little bit inwards so that these needles are almost bridging the underneath of your fabric.
And this is really how, if you have something that, you know, you can have um, something like a fence here, I'm blanking, but if you have something here to hold it that you can ride your hem against, that would be really helpful too. So this is what that twin needle does. It does that professional looking hem. And this is what it looks like on the back. Now you could go in here and clip some of your fabric here. Um, or as you practice more and more, you'll get closer and closer. And again, I just folded this up, but if I had measured properly, that would have been right on there, how I measured, but this is it. And see those two stretches, seams, sorry, this two stitches makes your hem really stretchy. So you can get this over your head, you can get your arms in it. So that's a really easy way to get a beautiful hem on your t-shirt. You can also use this on necklines. I'm going to grab that shirt that I had here. So this is a t-shirt hem or a t-shirt neckline that I sewed. You can see I sewed with a zigzag on, and then I use those twin needles just to top stitch to secure my neckband in there. And it looks really nice and really professional. And I did this all on my sewing machine. And I also have it on the hem here. So you can see there, and that's what it looks like on there. Um, somebody asked, is there a name for the foot you use with a twin needle? This is just right now, this is the universal, it's the T foot for this machine. And what's important is you wanna just make sure that this opening here is wider than your, your needles there. So that's really important as you sew. Great. All right. So um, are there any other questions about knits that I can answer? I hope I gave you enough information on sewing seams, um, sewing a hem. You can do a t-shirt band using that twin needle. Are the stitches two different types? Um, I'm using, I'm not sure if you're which stitch you're talking about, um, but I, for this twin needle, I'm just using a straight, it's number one on this machine, your typical straight stitch, and the needles are what's doing that stitch, not the actual stitch setting on your um, machine. And like I said, I have this on a length of four. You might want it a little tighter or a little bigger. Can you hem with one needle is someone asked. Yeah, so you can do any of those, uh, you could do a zigzag. So oh, let me pull this out here and I can show you. And while you're putting the other needle back in, you know, mm -hmm. the, a couple of people asked about fleece. Um, you know, I think, for me, I use the same sort of ideas as uh, what you're doing here on fleece. Is that what mm -hmm. you do as well? Yeah, generally, I'd say I do not sew fleece often. However, the things I run into when I sew fleece is it is going to be thicker. So, you know, you're going to want to change your presser foot tension. So this isn't pushing all that down and squishing your fabric. Um, but I sew it pretty much the same. Um, again, you're going to probably do a wider length. Um, the bulkier your knit, the like wider, you don't need as many stitches in there. You can see on here, like this is a, where did I put my, my practice ones? This is a really fine, lightweight knit. So these stitches, like even these two, I changed the length and they still work just fine. However, if I was doing something really tight on a fleece, um, it's going to get buried in there and tight. So you might want to just do a longer length or a little bit of a looser stitch. Um, and I wouldn't, my personal opinion is I wouldn't do the over, um, the over edge one on a fleece just because you want that stitch only holds so much fabric. And because fleece is so much thicker, you want it to grab enough. So I would come in a little bit and just use like a zigzag or something um, and leave that seam allowance in there. But that's just my opinion. I don't know, Sonny, if you have more opinions on fleece <laughs> than I do. No, I, I think that, you know, again, for me, fleece 
because it is a knit, I still want to use, like you said, a zigzag stitch works great, um, but something other than a straight stitch. And someone is asking, Kelly was asking about using stitch witchery inner seams. And I still, even if you're using stitch witchery with a, with a knit, I still would use a zigzag stitch. I wouldn't use a straight stitch because it's still going to, if the knit stretches too much, you're still going to pop your seam. Yep. And I'm going to show you that right now. So here, let me, so for this, I'm just making my length a little longer and I'm bringing in my width. All right. And now I'm going to switch to a straight hem just to show you. All right, so here's two simpler hem options. And you can see if you do this, stretches really nicely, you'll be able to get that over your head. And if you were to do this in a not red color that matched your fabric, that would look really nice. And again, I could come in here and trim some of my edge here. And a zigzag makes a nice, nice pretty hem on a t-shirt. So that would be really cute. Um, and then this is a straight stitch and you can see it stretches, but if I were to put that over my head and pull it, now I just popped my um, hem there. So that's why you don't really want to use a straight stitch on um, knits at all. I will occasionally use it around a, say I'm doing like a neckline that um, is interfaced or a keyhole or something that I don't want to stretch. Um, then maybe you'll do a straight stitch to kind of uh, keep everything in place, but it's gotta be somewhere where you're not gonna put pressure on it because then you're gonna pop a stitch. So um, are there any other questions about knits? Because we have just a few more minutes, but then we are done for the day. So I wanna just make sure if anyone has any other questions, I'll answer them now. If not, I'm gonna switch over you back to me. Um, so sorry, Amanda, people are just asking about changing needles and the right needle for the right, you know, fabrics. I think it is important if you want to address that again. Yeah, absolutely. So let me find. So what I suggest is get one of these packs here because this is, has multiple sizes in it. And this one is awesome because it has both the universal and the ballpoint. Um, so I have everything I need in this pack and it has the multiple sizes. So again, you see here this two, just a little side information about needles. These two numbers, the top one, the higher one is a European number and the bottom is the US number. And what you really need to know is a 12 is gonna be thinner and lighter than a 14. So those are the important things. So for those lightweight knits, you're going to use a 12. And for those heavier knits in this pack, you're going to use a 14. And when I change needles, like just for today, I'm doing, you know, a t-shirt project. I'll just use my one ballpoint needle. I only changed out my needle when I wanted to use the twin needle, but this is reusable. Um, you should just be changing your needles every six to eight hours of sewing. Um, I like to just have a fresh needle for every project, especially with knits, because if it gets dull or it's gonna snag, um, so you'll start noticing it. So I highly suggest you don't need to change it throughout your project, project, but you should be changing your needle either for every project or every six to eight hours. And that goes for whatever needle you're using. Any other questions before we wrap up today? No? All right. Well, then I just want to say thank you, everyone. I hope you learned a bunch about knits and you can go make a t-shirt on your sewing machine. Uh, I hope it gave you a little more confidence to sew them because they're super fun and make great wearable garments. So thank you for joining me today. And yeah, Amanda, I just, people are asking about disposing of needles and I, or broken needles. And, you know, I use 
an old package and I write old needles on it. I don't like to dispose of needles like in trash. I don't know if you have a, or a pill bottle or something. I don't know if you have a different way. <laughs> yep. A pill bottle is great. Um, putting them in this package, just keep one and writing old. I do that with rotary cutters as well. Like my blades, I'll keep an old pack that writes old. And so you can throw it out that way. Um, you can also tape, like put tape around them. Um, sometimes I'll just cut a little piece of cardboard, tape my broken needle to it, wrap it with tape, and then it's safe. You don't have to worry about hurting anyone. Um, I will say rotary cutters are great for cutting knits. So we didn't really get to touch on cutting knits. Um, but I will say rotary cutters are a bonus as you get into knits, cutting them because you can, if your fabric's moving, you won't accidentally stretch your fabric as you're lifting it to cut with scissors. So definitely try that out. If you cut knits, scissors are totally fine. Just make sure they're sharp. So you're not pulling your fabric, but I hope we answer the question about needle dis disposal and cutting knits. Um, so thank you everyone uh, and have fun sewing your knits. This is really fun. Thank you, Amanda and Suni. See you all on the other side. Bye.